Hi everyone. This is also my talk, Chen from the Shandong University. This work is about、uh, leakage resilience of the duplex construction and the duplex-based authenticated encryption. The work is cooperated with Olivia, Thomas, and Fix. We start with the sponge construction in this picture.、Uh, here, the function f is a keyless cryptographic function. Or a cryptographic strong permutation in most cases, the sponge construction starts with some initial value and、uh, iteratively call the function f.、Uh, each time, a block of message with r bits is exalted into one part of the state, while the other c bit of the state is not touched. So after an iteration, the r bit state will become the output.、Uh, the sponge construction will thus. Absorb the message and、uh, produce some digest. It turns out to be an indifferentiable random oracle with a variable input length and a variable input output length. So this could be a multi-purpose crypto object used for many settings.、Uh, for example, for cryptographic hashing, for max, and for pseudo random generations. Based on this structure, the designers further propose the duplex construction. Each duplex call can observe、uh, an input and produce an output, and the output could be used as a crypto key. This ensures one-pass、uh, authenticated encryption designs. So, for example, Ascon,、uh, one of the CISA final winners, is duplex-based. This is the structure. It is one-pass.、Uh, the AD is injected here, and the message blocks are exalted by the duplex outputs. And they and they in turn affect the computation. So the final state depends on all of them, on the AD and on the messages, and can be used as a message authentication code. Now the question arises from masking duplex to defend against the side channel attacks or differential power analysis. The question is: duplex seems to offer some sort of leakage resilience. Is this true? Uh, for example, the authors of this reference they designed a masked implementation for Ascon. They only masked the red functions and leave the others exposed. The idea is that the, these internal secret values are kept evolving, so it is infeasible to collect multiple power traces to recover. So they can just be left there. Similar commands could be found in other earlier papers. So, for example, the designers of Kayak mentioned that the side the side channel security could rely on the evolving states. So, ultimately, is this true? Regarding this question, we have our first result: the leakage resilience of the duplex construction.、Uh, in Detail. We consider this duplex-based stream cipher or stream encryption, and、uh, our security model is the leakage eavesdropper security. It means the advantage of distinguishing encrypting two messages, M0 and M1, should be somewhat limited, even if the leakages of the encryptions are given. Of course, we need some assumptions on the side-channel leakages to the to ensure the security. So for this. We assume that these internal secret state values are unpredictable from the leakages or non-invertible given the leakages. So note that this is the minimum assumption for leakages because otherwise,、uh, if the leakages give the、uh, the secret、uh, and there is no secret at all. More detailedly, we define a secret recovery advantage as this:、uh, for the main setting, we take the CP the capacity state as the challenge secret and view it as uniformly distributed advantage challenge. This challenge is evolved in two computations.、Uh, one of the computation is obvious: it's the subsequent permutation call take, that takes it as a part of the input. While the other computation. The other computation is the previous permutation call that produces it as a part of the output. Of course, this also leaks information about this value. We、uh, we view the leakage function of the permutation circuit as a combination of two somewhat independent functions.、Uh, one of them is the input part L in, and the other is the output part L out. 
So by this, the real-world side channel leakage observations correspond to that. The adversary gets the previous output leakage function and the subsequent input leakage functions as input and try to recover the CPID secret state from such two leakages. As there are only two leakages that can be exploited, the success probability of side channel secret recovery or the defined adv attack advantage should be very small and could be enable some security. We also assume Pi is a random permutation and uh, works in the random permutation model. This random permutation model seems unavoidable for analyzing sponge constructions. Besides, we assume the advantage of distinguishing encrypting two different single message blocks are somewhat limited. With these assumptions, we use a reduction to show that, uh, first, all the internal state values remain somewhat pseudo random, uh, otherwise, the eavesdropper ad adversary could recover some of the CPD state from the side channel leakages. This re reduction is embedded in a classical H coefficient technique based argument, and uh, it uh, helps uh, bonding the probability of the so called bad transcripts in this H coefficient argument. Then, we use another reduction to show that the advantage of distinguishing encrypting two long message messages reduces to the advantage of distinguishing encrypting two messages of only a single block. This follows the CCS 15 paper of our group. So, so, so the, the, the final result, uh, eventually we prove the final result. It means that the duplex based stream encryption is, uh, in some sense, a security preserving domain extension for the single block leakage encryption. We know that in the classical black box setting, indeed the security of key sponge or duplex could be based on some less ideal assumption. Uh, in detail, we can add a sequence of key ignoring actions and write the key duplex in such a form. Uh, in the black box setting, this representation is equivalent to the original representation. As, uh, as you see, these ignoring could cancel each other and enable restoring the blank state. Then instead of assuming a random permutation pi, we can assume this block cipher, the partial key the even mental cipher built upon the permutation pi is a secure PRP. Uh, this assumption is less ideal than the random permutation model. But this equivalent representation is not possible in the leakage setting because uh, how can we handle the leakages of these exploring actions that don't that do not exist in reality? In all, we didn't find the standard assumptions based uh, argument for the leakage resilience of duplex, and uh, it seems this could be an open question. We we'll compare our leakage resilience result with two concurrent works. First, this reference assumes that the secret state still has enough entropy after being leaked, and uh, second, this assumes the classical bounded output leakage functions. Both of them uh, give rise to simple and concise theory and analysis. So for ours, uh, as mentioned, unpredictable leakage is a minimum assumption. And more importantly, we believe this is closer to practice. Uh, see the discussion in this bib. And also, uh, it seems unpredictability assumption can be verified in practice. We can just run a side channel state recovery attack on the device and measure the success probability to verify the assumption. So anyway, one side is concise theory while the other side is practice relevance. The approaches are complementary. Uh, we hope all of these approaches could help push the research direction of practice-oriented leakage resilience. We next step deeper and consider designing duplex-based authenticated encryption. We can use encrypt the MAC composition uh, as in this picture. This will give rise to a two-path design. It has a strong integrity against the encryption and decryption leakages with nonce misuse. It also has CCA security against the encryption and decryption leakages. This is because 
the decryption starts by hashing the AD and the ciphertext and checking the integrity. Once the check integrity checking does not pass, the decryption immediately stops. So the decryption leakages only leak a little information about the key here. And there is no information leaked during decryption here. And this leakage, this key could be protected by masking. It is light because this part is keyless and it does not need to be protected. So this is a two-pass design. The two-pass design with uh, mode level side channel security or with leakage resilience. But on the efficiency side, we may prefer one-pass designs. It has been known that one-pass is not good for resisting decryption leakages. So the question is, uh, if we insist on this more efficient approach, what can be achieved? Regarding this, we note that the duplex could have two roles in this uh, construction. First, when the internal state has not been recovered, the duplex functions as a standard one-pass AE, as in this picture. Then, uh, when the internal state has been fully recovered from side channel leakages, the duplex collapses to a keyless crypto hashing, the same as a sponge construction. So uh, there is still some cryptographic uh, properties that can be used in this uh, construction, and we could play with the hash digest. With these observations, we come up with such a design. We use a tweakable block cipher to absorb the hash digest UV. And the key, the AE key, is only used by the tweakable block cipher. So we only need to mask the so we only need to mask the tweakable block cipher. The others can just be lived there. This could greatly reduce the energy consumption of the implementation. As the hashing digest absorbed by the TBC could be two n bit, this overcomes the birthday integrity issue. And the use of TBC enables a meet in the middle style integrity checking. In detail, given N, A, and C, we will compute along this direction in this flow to reach this intermediate value U and V. And then we use the V as the tweak and use the user specified tag Z to compute along the inverse direction to reach the value U star. And then we check if u equals u star for the integrity checking. By this, even if the integrity checking action leaks something, it only leaks some useful this value. The hash digest u is ultimately unsecret, while the inverse of the trickable block cipher u star is a pseudo random value uh, that is also useless. This follows our previous chess design. About its leakage security, uh, some security against the decryption leakages remains achievable, even if we only have one pass. That is, uh, ciphertext integrity against the nonce misuse and the decryption leakages. This model is named CIML2 in our related papers. The reason is that the, the adversary could fix the nonce to the decryption oracle and recover the internal states via leakages. Indeed, this is the case. But then, the AE collapses to a hash then max scheme. Uh, as we mentioned before, the duplex becomes a hash, and the, the, the second TBC becomes a MAC function. So it becomes a hash then max scheme, and the integrity remains insured, as long as the trickable block cipher remains secure. On the downside, CCA security decreases. The one pass AE only resists the encryption leakages and only ensures security on messages encrypted with fresh nonces. Here, decryption leakage is harmful because if decryption leaks, then given N and the corresponding ADA and the, the ciphertext C, we can feed the decryption machine with the same nonce N and different AD block A1 and recover the first duplex state by DPA. This is feasible. Then it is easy to compute the message of the ciphertext C and recover the, 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 the and break the full and fully break the confidentiality. And about security at fresh nonces, it is because 
if a nonce n is reused in encryption, then uh, obvious messages encrypted with n are no longer secret. But this won't affect another nonce n star because n and n star would correspond to different initials that b and b star, and the recovery of d uh, of b won't affect b star. B star can only be affected by the reuse of the corresponding nonce N star itself. So if N star is never reused, then B star remains secret and safe, and the messages in and the message encrypted with N star remains secure, even if some other nonce N is reused. We also follow our chess design and include the public key for better multi-user security. Uh, let me elaborate. The multi-user model considers the setting where the mode is deployed in mass and many instances with many user keys are there. Crucially, the adversary goal is not to break a specific instance. It is satisfied with breaking uh, only one of the U instances in the entire system. To have a better security for such scenarios, we use an unsecret key PK as a tweak. So in the system, PK could be uniformly distributed, but we don't need it to be kept a secret, so it is public randomness or public key. This avoids uh, the attack with complexity to, to the length of the secret key divided by U, or say it avoids the so-called multi-user security degradation. Finally, we also use domain separation bits to distinguish whether the last block of the AD or of the message is full or not, and to clarify the border between processing A and M. Please see our paper for more details and security analysis and also discussion. Interestingly, to some extent, our design meets uh, ASCO and Jibben. We all use a duplex as a main processing part. And we all use keyed functions for initial and final. Uh, but ASCO and Jibben are purely permutation based, while we use one more primitive, the trickable block cipher, for better resistance to decryption leakages. We, uh, however, we remark that in the field of side channel security, it is not uncommon to use uh, different crypto objects for efficient rekeying. Besides ASQA and Jibben, other designs with more level side channel security include our previous chess proposal TEDT and, uh, and a previous FSE proposal ISAP by another group. Both of them are encrypt the MAC two pass compositions. So, for example, see here, this is the ISAP AAD, and uh, this is the encryption pass of ISAP. It is mostly a duplex based stream cipher, and this is the MAC part. Both of the two designs employ the plain keyless hash than MAC authentication. Uh, of course, the reason is obvious the keyless hash does not need to be protected. So the whole protection could be lighter than a classical AAD. Uh, these two these two passes designs are more resilient to leakages as uh, explored in previous works. But on the other on the other hand, one of the main proposals of our work is to investigate what can be had on the more efficient one pass side. So uh, the design. The different designs with different number of passes and the different emphasizes, they are just complementary and are probably suitable for different use cases. We also discussed about comparison of our multi-user design to existing ones. The protocol TLS 1.3 is used the AES-GCM for encryption. The designers had been aware of the threat of parallel attacks on multiple users. To countermeasure, the protocol TLS proposed to use randomized nonce, and the resulted GCM variant was called RGCM, randomized GCM by Blair. So the, this technique, the nonce randomization technique, it also helps separate the encryption of different users. So the underlying ideas are similar, but uh, 
about our random public key idea, its advantage is the less requirement on randomness. Because the random public key is chosen at the setup phase, uh, it's chosen once for all, and then all the messages are just processed using this random stream, use the same random stream. The shortage is that it needs new designs, and uh, mostly the new designs have to be based on new primitives, such as pickable block ciphers and strong crypto permutations. This should be compared with the more classical block cipher based designs. About the nonce randomization technique, it almost uses the underlying AD as a black box and uh, in some sense amplifies the multi-user security generically. The disadvantage is that it needs more randomness. Uh, it needs a new random nonce for every encryption, so it uh, could be costly. To reduce this cost, uh, one could use a random oracle to derive new pseudo-random nonce for new messages, but this is to trade computational complexity for randomness complexity. So all in all, the two approaches, both the random public key approach and the nonce randomization approach, I think they are just complementary. And uh, as the real-world scenarios are complicated, maybe both of them uh, could find their places. In the end, let's have a summary. We establish leakage resilience of the duplex constructions, and we show that the minimum leakage assumptions of unpredictability suffice. Based on this, we designed the AE mode TT sponge. It is one pass, it is online, and it employs the inverse of the clickable block cipher for less decryption leakages or for more mode level side channel security during decryption. Uh, using an N bit clickable block cipher, it has beyond N divided by 2 bit multi user security. See the three lines for, for some details. With respect to N, the block size of the clickable block cipher, the concrete security is almost optimal. It's 2 to n divided by n square. Of course, the classical c divided by 2 term remains here. But as c could be much larger than n, uh, the, it won't be the bottleneck, and the concrete security could be nice. And concretely, take n uh, as 128, and c 256. This mode ensures 2 to 115 security and uh, this is sufficient for the NIST call for a lightweight AE proposal. The mode was instantiated by our group as the AE algorithms book and submitted to the NIST competition. Please see its website for more information. So that's all. Thank you for your attention.